Good Monday morning and welcome to Begin in the Word. Today we look at Romans chapter 10 verses 11 through 13. Where the Bible says, For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This text here pulls together a theme that has been obvious so far in the book of Romans as a major theme for Paul, and that is the salvation of all mankind by Jesus Christ, including the Gentiles. And so words that reoccur in this text, like everyone, the same Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all for everyone who calls in the name of the Lord, those words really draw that out. And his two particular quotations from the Old Testament make that clear the first coming from Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16 and you might remember how Paul has already alluded to Isaiah 28 16 back in Romans chapter 9. Now Isaiah 28 16 doesn't technically use the word for everyone but it does use a word that essentially says whoever and so Paul rightly understands that means everyone whoever believes in him will not be put to shame and so he uses the word everyone here and then of course this next text this next quotation comes from Joel chapter 2, verse 32, where everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this does, in the Hebrew and in the Greek, refer to everyone. That is the word that is used. So all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's Jew, that's Gentile. And that's the point Paul wants to make here. If you believe, if you call on the name of the Lord, and the, notice those two things are roughly equivalent. We'll talk more about what it means to call on the name of the Lord in just a moment. But if you believe and call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. You will not be put to shame, or the Hebrew says to be put to haste. But the point is God will redeem and save those who believe in him. And so the principle of faith applies to all, Jew and Gentile. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. All are saved on the principle of faith. Now, on occasion, you will sometimes hear, well, God had a particular plan for the Jews. The Jews had a certain plan of salvation, and the Gentiles, on the other hand, had a different plan of salvation. Sometimes it looks like this. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, when Paul says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus, for the remission of your sins. Well, that was for the Jews. And when it comes to the Gentiles, they don't have to be baptized. They just merely have to have faith. And so there are separate or distinct plans of salvation between the Jew and the Gentile. But notice what is said here in verse 12. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. There is no distinction. All are saved on the principle of faith. And so what a Jew has to do to become a member of the covenant family is the same thing that a Gentile must do to become a member of the covenant family. Gentiles attained the righteousness they were looking for because they pursued it by faith, whereas Jews did not because they pursued it by works. It's not that they had a different plan. They just had a different implementation. The Jews did it by works. The Gentiles did it by faith. So an important question and an interesting question is why bring up the subject of calling on the name of the Lord? Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That, of course, is a quote from Joel chapter 2, verse 32. The phrase calling on the name of the Lord is an oft-used phrase in Scripture that refers to calling out to God for help and aid, often in the face of a hopeless situation. And so it, it makes sense for Paul to bring this quotation in, especially given that what he just said in the previous section, where he talks about the word is in your heart, it's in your mouth. This is us submitting to God and helplessness and our humility saying, Lord, you are God, you are the Savior, we need you to save because we are incapable of doing it on our, on our own. And so instead of performing the works of the law and earning salvation, the proper attitude is of humbly coming to God, recognizing his full power to save and so calling on the name of the Lord is what it means to be saved by faith. It's not as if it were a distinct thing. It's not as if calling on the name of the Lord refers to, let's say, an altar call where you say the sinner's prayer apart from faith or apart from baptism or other faithful responses to God. This is a phrase that encapsulates what it means to come to God in need of his help. And that's why 
in passages like Acts chapter 22, verse 16, calling on the name of the Lord is associated with baptism. And now, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized, calling on the name of the Lord. Responding to God in faith, calling on the name of the Lord, submitting to God's plan in baptism are all the same thing. They all refer to what it takes to submit to God, to submit to Christ, and to become members of the covenant family and be saved. And so calling on the name of the Lord is an expression of our hopelessness and our need for God to save us. That's how that phrase is used in the Old Testament. You can see that really clearly in the Psalms. Well, what can we take away from this text? First, we learned that Jews and Gentiles are saved in the same way. There is no distinction. All are saved by belief, by faith, by calling on the name of the Lord. The mechanism that saves one is the same mechanism that saves the other. God has not created two different plans of salvation. He has brought us all into one covenant family with one Lord who is Lord of all, who bestows his riches on all, on everyone who calls on his name. Thank you for joining us today on Begin in the Word. It's my hope that just as you have begun today in the Word of God, you will live out today in the Word of God.